Christine Dorn. Welcome to Frontier Patriot and welcome to my kitchen. Now this kitchen has what's called a hearth in it, which is a cooking fireplace, which is going really, really good right now. And actually it might look completely different from the modern kitchen that you have at home, but really everything that's in here, you can use it to do the exact same thing that you can do in a modern kitchen. The problem is, is everything just looks completely different. And that's the point I wanna to illustrate today that there are things in here that you can get and use for modern uses? How is that even possible? So what are we gonna to do today? Now there isn't really no rhyme or reason to why I decided to do this, but day I like toaster strudels. And so we are going to make toaster strudels using a 200 year old toaster. How is that possible? Let me show you what a 200 year old toaster even looks like. This is a 200 year old toaster. Doesn't look anything like the toaster in your kitchen right now, probably. Unless you're like me and you have something like this laying around. But this is, I guarantee to you all, a toaster. Now toasters like this were common from the 17th century all the way through maybe the mid 1800s, maybe a little before then. So how in the world do you use this thing? Where's the cord? I don't see a cord anywhere. There's just this long handle and strangely enough, this swivels around. Now, how do we use it? Let me get the star of today's video. Did you ever think you'd see a girl in 18th century clothes holding a box of terrestrial strudels? Me either, until about 10 minutes ago when I decided to make this video. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to put toaster strudels inside of this toaster today and see if I can in fact make toaster strudels using a device from 200 years ago just to show you all that they had everything back then that we do now, it just looks completely different. So in order to make toast with this toaster, because people have been eating toast and raw bread for, oh goodness, who knows how long, you cut up your bread this is before they had pre-packaged, pre-sliced bread. So you had to bake it at home or go to the baker and bring it back and cut it up into pieces. And then you'd put one slice here and one slice here. And when one side was toasted, you had to spin it around and toast the other side. Now, how smart is that? So you put this in front of your hearth, in front of your fire, and the heat from the fire is what's gonna do the magic here. I got strawberry flavor toaster cereals just because that's the most classic flavor. I used to eat these all the time when I was a kid. My vice, I actually haven't had one of these in probably 10 years now. I'm having an early midlife crisis and I want some toaster cereals. So here we go. If you all watching are not from America, this is a delicacy in this great country. And you know what, strangely enough, they did actually have things that are very, Similar to toaster strudels in the 18th century, it was a pastry that's filled with jam. And by, I mean, quite frankly, it looked like a toaster strudel. It just didn't have the icing that came along with it. So let's start this mad Frankenstein experiment here. Now, you know toaster strudels at home, all you have to do is put it in your toaster, plop it down in there, Oh, a couple minutes later, plops back up. Then you put icing on it if you want to, and boom, you have a very healthy, nutritious breakfast. I think I'm gonna make two of them. So what you do, just pretend this is a piece of bread too. Plop, just like that, you put it down in there. Plop, nutritious breakfast right here. I'm gonna put it in front of the fireplace. After one side's done being toasted, you spin it and you toast the other side. Is it gonna work? Let's see. Well, here we have it. Here is the breakfast of every American's dream. We have toaster strudels. Now, the biggest downside I noticed is these ones I made in a modern electric toaster it took maybe three minutes, if I had to guess. 
This took about 15 minutes, so that's the biggest downside, but I kept it pretty far away from the fire just to be sure that it wasn't going to burn and that it was going to cook thoroughly all the way through. This looks actually much more appetizing than the modern electric toaster one does. Like, the, it's just brown and golden all the way through. Doesn't everything taste better when it's cooked over a fire? So what we're going to do is I have my special assistant here, Ron Rayfield. He has a very large stomach and he would like to try some of these delicious pastries. We're going to try the one cooked in front of the hearth in a 200 year old toaster and one cooked in a two year old toaster. Two year old toaster. And we'll see if they taste any different. Does this have more of a smoky flavor? Does this have more of a rich flavor? Cause I slow cooked it. So maybe the berry kind of infused in the pastry. That's <laughs> so I'm talking like I'm a French chef or something making toaster strudels here. My predictions <laughs> are you are going to be correct. This is the one that was cooked in the hearth. You can see there's this little burn mark from where the toaster was. And then this is the one that was cooked in the modern day toaster. This one obviously has more of a golden color to it. It took 15 minutes before I felt like it was really done through and through. Now's the best part. We're going to decorate it with the icing that comes with the box. Is this awakening some of your childhood memories? Cause it really is for me. We're going to try the modern one first, just because like I said, it's been about a decade since I tried one of these and I don't even remember faintly what it tastes like, except that it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go, Ron. This is the one you made. These are the modern toaster ones. Now I'm normally a guy that eats it with a fork, but she says, uh, uh, you got to eat it with your hands. What? You don't eat these with a fork? Kids would just grab them and run out the door in the morning. Okay. So it tastes like a toaster strudel. Shocking, isn't it? <laughs> it's good. Nostalgia of a 6.30 morning in 1996, <laughs> waiting for the bus, and I'm eating right. a toaster strudel. Exactly. Either that or a pop tart. <laughs> I mean, it's good, but it's nothing special as an adult. Right. As an adult, we know better. Yeah, it's, yeah, whatever. Okay, now, well, let's <laughs> let me, try the hard cooking. Let me cleanse my palate here first. He's got some water. Palate. Palate cleanser for toaster strudels. This is a new one. All right, now here I'm you go. excited. This one was yours, your melted American flag, and my <laughs> unrecognizable face. We should ding. So much better. You, you probably can't hear it, but it's a soft crunch because it's flaky. So How is this possible? The heat of the fire is <laughs> caused the puff paste to actually do what it's supposed to do. Puff up and get flaky. You're right. It is so much more puffed up. Oh my gosh. We have to show them a close up of how much it puffed up. That's really incredible. The hearth cooked one. You all were wondering, is the flavor better? Okay, so the actual crust part is so much more flakier. It's more, it like risen up in the heat or something. It rose up. It's incredible. But I do think that the jam inside of here, it did infiltrate the pastry a little bit better, the flavor, when it was cooked slower. That might also be part of it too, because in a modern toaster, it's convenient. You put it in there, two minutes later, it's out. Well, that means the flavor can't really get through the whole pastry as well as when you slow cook it, as I did here. So yes, this tastes a lot better than the modern made toaster strudel. What a weird experiment, but I am blown away right now. So today we have proven that you can indeed make toaster strudels in a 200 year old toaster. And not only that, but it actually tastes better when it's cooked in front of a fire. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. We might win a, uh, a, a peace prize for this discovery. Mm. Wow, that went fast. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you again next time on Frontier Patriot with more of our random craziness from history. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.